Yeah, why don't we go through the paces here? So then we could try a pH of 9.5. So the change here is now the pH is higher than the pKa for the amine group. So now this amine group would lose its proton. But that's the only change that would happen from this picture over here. And now the net charge would be what would our net charge be now? Minus one. Minus one. And then the last case might be if the pH is, say, 12. That's an important one to draw. Give us this. Now, when the pH is 12, that's a high pH compared to all the pKa's. That's a high pH compared to any of the pKa's, so everybody should be in their deprotonated form. So now we deprotonate the tyrosine here. And now the net charge is negative 2. Notice that every time we pass a threshold of pH, so to speak, the charge changes by one unit. So if you carefully and gradually change the pH, you can keep changing the charge by one unit. We'll use that to solve problems in a couple of minutes. So this is an example of an acidic side chain over here. By the way, um, one, one question would be, why is this an acidic proton? Why is this proton acidic? see that right here. This negative charge is resonant stabilized because there's another resonance form where the negative charge is on this oxygen. Normally, normally hydrogens on oxygens are not acidic. Alcohol, oxygen, alcohols, alcohols are not really very acidic, but this is more acidic because it can stabilize the charge by resonance. So a carboxylic acid is much more acidic than an alcohol. But is that relatively acidic? This? Yeah. Oh, well, relative to whom? This is, yeah, it's, it's, acidic, it's more acidic than, say, I don't know, a alkane, but it's a lot less acidic than a yeah. carboxy group. Okay. That's why we call these carboxylic acids. Why is that even, sorry, why is sorry. that even acidic, the alcohol? Well, it, everybody, every, acidity is relative. So anyone with a proton has some level of acidity. Everybody with a proton has some conditions in which they would be willing to give up that proton. The only point I was trying to make is this is much less acidic than this group over here because this can stabilize the negative charge much, uh, much less well because it has, it's not uh, resonance stabilized. That's why we call this a carboxylic acid, but we don't call this an alcoholic acid. Maybe that's one of the reasons they call it don't call them alcoholic acids. All right, now how about, but this is an alcohol. Tyrosine is an alcohol. This side chain is an alcohol. Why is this acidic when alcohols are usually not acidic? This would be a good exam question. It's not phenyl to, to by, resonance. by resonance. <laughs> and a good example, and in order to get full credit, then you'd want to draw a bunch of those resonance forms. There's maybe three different resonance forms where we put the negative charge in three different places on this phenyl group over here. So alcohols are usually not acidic, but this tyrosine alcohol is acidic because the negative charge is stabilized by resonance. Now, normally you would not need to figure out that this is acidic because we can see it from the table, but it would be a fair test question to ask why it's acidic. Yeah, and later on I know there was some tricky molecule, I think it's histidine or something like that, histidine, right. where it's like which one is the H, and right. about something about aromaticity. Yeah, that's a very important point too. That's right, so we'll have to be sure to go over that. Yes. Now, by the way, notice that we just finished the group on the table labeled hydroxy containing. We just did serine, threonine, and tyrosine. Now, is tyrosine, does tyrosine have an acidic side chain? 
Does tyrosine have an acidic side chain? Yeah, that's what we just covered. But how about the other alcohol side chains? Are they acidic? No, notice that they have dashes in that column. And now we can explain why that is. Why is tyrosine the only alcohol with the acidic side chain? Because it's the only one that's resonance stabilized. It's the only one with that benzene ring. So again, that would be a fair question to ask what, why one of those has a acidic number and one and the other two don't. So it's important to watch out. Don't assume that anything with an alcohol group is an acidic side chain, only tyrosine. We can always confirm that in the table. Shall we go on? Mm -hmm. right. Now let's go on to asparagine. Who's the beta carbon going to be in asparagine? And then this would be the rest of the side chain? Okay, and let's say. Sorry, don't mm -hmm. Of course, they already have the side chain here in the table. All we're doing is getting practice with interpreting how those side chains connect up to the alpha curves. Right. Generally speaking, you can see they connect up in the C by the CH2 groups. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's suppose we're at a pH of 1 then the correct form for this nitrogen would be a plus, and this would be the correct form for this carboxy group. And do we need to worry about protonating or deprotonating the side chain? It's good. It's good. How can we tell? Because there's a dash in the column for the side chain. There's a dash in the column for the side chain. Now we need to talk about this a little bit more. What type of functional group does this side chain have? Good, amide, or I pronounce it amide, but you might have the right pronunciation. So it's an amide or an amide. This is an amide group. We talked about that, I guess, last time when we were talking about carboxylic acid derivatives. This is an amide, and this is an amine. We saw the difference between amines and amides. An amine is where the nitrogen is just bound to a normal alkane hydrogen. And an amide is a carboxylic acid derivative where the nitrogen is connected to a carbonyl oxygen. Nitrogen of a carbonyl oxygen is an amide. Nitrogen of a normal alkane carbon is an amine. Now, going back to here, this nitrogen can protonate, right? So we know that amines are basic. But now, we now know our amine's basic. Can this nitrogen protonate? What did the table tell us? It tells us it can't. But wait a second, this has a lone pair, doesn't it? So this is going to be actually very important for the rest of the course, that amines are basic and nucleophilic and amides are not basic and not nucleophilic, and we need to be able to explain why that is. So let's take a detour here. basic and nucleophilic, which means they like to be at the tails of electron pushing arrows. Amides are not basic and not nucleophilic. Even though the nitrogen has a lone pair, we don't generally see this lone pair being donated. This nitrogen is not eager to donate its lone pair. We need to be able to explain why that is. And the explanation is based on resonance. Let's use electron pushing arrows to draw the other resonance structure of this amide. Let's draw the other resonance structure of this amide using electron pushing arrows. That's good. Let's focus just on the nitrogen for a second. Okay. Because the thing we're trying to explain is, we know that an amine nitrogen is a good nucleophile, and we're trying to explain why the amide nitrogen is not a good nucleophile. Well, why does this resonance structure show us why this nitrogen would not be expected to be a nucleophile? 
Yeah, in fact, in this resonance structure, it has a full positive charge. In this resonance structure, it has a full positive charge, but what types of things are good nucleophiles? Things with negative charges, not things with positive charges. This resonance structure explains why this nitrogen is not a good nucleophile, because it has a resonance structure with a positive charge. Well, that's the opposite of what we would want for a nucleophile. It would be better if it had negative charges, certainly not a positive charge. This might seem trivial, but this is going to be a very important problem-solving technique for the rest of the course. Amines are nucleophilic and basic, and amide nitrogens are not nucleophilic and basic, because they have a resonance structure where there's a positive charge on that nitrogen. Generally speaking, we're rarely going to actually draw this resonance structure. You shouldn't actually draw this resonance structure, but you need to keep in the back of your mind that it exists, because it explains why this is not like an amine nitrogen. That's one big reason why we don't call these amines, but we make up a new name for them, because they don't behave the way an amine does. Putting the carbonyl next to the nitrogen completely changes the reactivity by putting in that other, by putting in that resonance structure. 